What is SOG? Military Assistance Command Vietnam Studies and Observations Group was a highly classified multi-service United States Special Operations Unit which conducted covert unconventional warfare operations prior to and during the Vietnam War. Established on 24 January 1964, the unit conducted strategic reconnaissance missions in the Republic of Vietnam, South Vietnam, the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, North Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia carried out the capture of enemy prisoners, rescued downed pilots, conducted rescue operations to retrieve prisoners of war throughout Southeast Asia, and conducted clandestine agent team activities and psychological operations. I am your host, Bruce Christensen. The history of SOD tells the stories of those who have fought valiantly to protect the liberty we hold most dear. The history of SOG has preserved and honors the legendary feats of our SOG soldiers. The history of SOG provides military history to today's soldiers. Veterans of all conflicts, their families, and to the public at large. Our mission is to educate, inspire and engage our communities now and for generations to come. I have embarked on an adventure of epic proportion. I have designed a new website. The History of Military Assistance Command Vietnam, Studies and Observations Group. Within the contents of the site, I have documented all aspects of SOG from 1964 to 1972. Including, overall history of SOG, SOG chiefs, bases, mission, teams, virtual museum, individual. Stories, pictures, videos and so much more. There is also a store to promote SOG authors, books, and other SOG-related items. www.sogsite.com My father Paul Christensen was assigned to SOG. Although he never talked about it, I did see his pictures and plaques. I knew he was a Green Beret, but not until my 30s did I find out what SOG was all about. The website, blogs and videos are dedicated to all the SOG warriors and the supporting units. Such as the air assets, maritime operations, mic forces and all of the indigenous troops assigned to SOG. One such warrior was John Thomas Walton was born in Newport, Arkansas on October 8, 1946. He was a standout football star on the public high school football team. His father, Sam, opened Walton's 5 and 10 cent store in Bentonville, Arkansas, a small business in a small town known for its hunting season's products. Walton had a modest upbringing, and after only two years of college he dropped out to enlist in the U.S. Army. When I was at Wooster College there were a lot of people talking about the war in the dorm rooms, but I didn't think they understood it, Walton said. Walton enlisted in the Army Special Forces also known as the Green Berets. I figured if you're going to do something, you should do it the best you can," he said during an interview with Andy Serwer for Fortune magazine. Assigned to Military Assistance Command Vietnam Studies and Observations Group or simple called SOG. Walton was stationed at FOB-1 in Phu Bai, where members of Strike Team Louisiana conducted deep penetration reconnaissance missions. Don Stryker Meyer of Recon Team Idaho, a teammate and friend of Walton's, wrote, in August of 68, on one such mission, Walton's six-man recon team was surrounded and overrun by enemy soldiers. The firefight became so intense that the team leader, William Pete Boggs, called an airstrike nap and directly on their own position to break contact. This count is extracted from page 119 of On the Ground, a SOG book written by John Stryker Meyer and John E. Peters. That strike killed one team member, wounded the team leader, and severed the right leg of the Green Beret radio operator Tom Cunningham Jr. Another team member was wounded four times by AK-47 gunfire by an enemy soldier whom Walton killed Meyer wrote. As the team's medic, Walton was responsible in setting up a triage point to tend to the casualties. He applied a tourniquet to Cunningham's leg that had begun to hemorrhage. The tourniquet ultimately saved his life, but he later lost his leg. 
facing hundreds of North Vietnamese soldiers NVA, and completely surrounded, Walton called in two extraction helicopters. The first helicopter, piloted by South Vietnamese Captain Thin Din, touched down and picked up members of the team, some of whom Walton personally carried. The enemy soldiers were now sprinting to prevent their escape. Bullets clanged off the chopper and whizzed by their bodies. The second helicopter was needed to get them all out, but realizing how dire the situation had turned, the first helicopter sat back down and picked up the entire team. Their weight was too much, and they barely managed to climb over the treetops. Walton's determination to get his teammates out of harm's way earned him the Silver Star, the nation's third highest award for valor. During a poker game on the night they returned to base, one of his teammates noticed that the skin on Walton's wrist was burnt. It was evidence of just how accurate the NBA gunfire was. Walton, Meyer, and his teammates enjoyed poker, Scrabble, and other games that require thought. They spoke about their goals and the dreams they hoped to accomplish when they returned home. Walton's was a life of adventure. After returning from Vietnam, Walton learned to fly and went to work as a pilot for Walmart. He later left the company to fly crop dusters over cotton fields in several southern states and co-founded Satlock, an aerial application company that pioneered the use of GPS technology in agricultural crop dusting. Walton then moved to San Diego where he founded Corsair Marine, a company that built trimmering sailboats. He also lived in Durango, Colorado, and was an enthusiastic skier, mountain biker, hiker, motorcycle rider, skydiver and scuba diver. In 1998, as part of the Philanthropy Roundtable, Walton and friend Ted Forstman established the Children's Scholarship Fund to provide tuition assistance for low-income families to send their children to private schools. He was an advocate of school vouchers. For his achievements, he received the William E. Simon Prize for Philanthropy Leadership. John Walton died on June 27, 2005, when the CGS Hawk Arrow home built ultralight aircraft registered as an experimental aircraft under FAA regulations that he was piloting crashed in Jackson, Wyoming. Walton's plane crashed at 12.20 p.m. shortly after taking off from Jackson Hole Airport. The National Transportation Safety Board later reported that Walton had improperly reinstalled the rear locking collar on the elevator control torque tube. This allowed the torque tube to move rearward during his flight and loosened the elevator control cable tension. The outcome of the failed repair was an in-flight loss of pitch control, without which Walton could not control the aircraft's altitude. Shortly before his death, Forbes magazine had estimated Walton's net worth to be $18.2 billion, tied with his brother Jim as the fourth richest person in the United States and 11th richest person in the world. Don once told a fellow recon team member, my dad has a small 5 and 10 cent store in Bentonville, Arkansas. John Walton, the true American hero. To learn more about John Walton's military service while serving with SOG, pick up John Stryker Meyer's books, Across the Fence and on the Ground, both can be purchased via Amazon.